Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the 50th episode of Sausage on a Fork, and I am absolutely delighted to say that I have been joined by none other than Lee MacDonald, who played Zamo Maguire. Lee, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. I am so pleased to be here, and the 50th anniversary. <laughs> uh, uh, that makes me feel really special. That is a, that's an honour, isn't it, the 50th? Brilliant, brilliant. That's what I was hoping you would say, something like that. That's what I was going for, so... You know, thank you so much for coming on. What we'll do, Lee, is we'll start this episode the way we start every episode. And if you can tell us how you first got into acting. It's a really odd one. I first got into acting. I I was about five and I my sister passed away, sadly passed away. Right. And, um, and I went really quiet and I wouldn't talk to anyone. And my, a teacher in my primary school, Mr. Moore, said to my parents, said, look, because there wasn't such thing as counselling and stuff like that then, but she, he yeah. said there's a drama club at the end of my road called Anna Shures, right. and it might be idea for Lee to go there to meet people and and sort of bring him out. So I I probably went I probably joined there when I was about seven, right? Um, just for drama classes, you know, not to be in TV or anything like that, yeah. just to bring me out. Um, and initially, that's obviously how I got to go to Anna Shares. Uh-huh. Anna Shares is quite a famous one. Uh, so, was there anyone else at Anna Shares that we might know? Um, I mean, Pauline, uh, Pauline Quirk, Linda Robson, Phil uh-huh. Daniels, uh, the Kemp brothers. I mean, I the list is endless. <laughs> but in my in my little group, there was uh, Mark Burdis, Susan yeah. Tully, uh, Dexter Fletcher, right. Mark Monero, just been on. TV was in Grangeville with me. Uh-huh. Um, so that you know, the names are and Melissa Wilkes, who played my girlfriend, she uh-huh. was there. Um, they've got so many people that have, have come from there and gone on and done, you know, done really, really well. Yeah, brilliant. And checking your, your CV and stuff, you did quite a bit of work before Grange Hill. Was there anyone like sort of you know, you 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 started working with and you thought, wow, this is a big name or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I started doing uh, back in the day, and I'm not sure it, it was like kids programs, but for schools. They were filmed right. for schools. It's very difficult to uh, to explain because they wasn't like an ITV. They were filmed and they were shown to school. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you you your teacher would bring the big trolley out <laughs> with a big telly in it, uh, yeah. lens, and you'd open it up. It's the big uh, video player. You'd yeah. Fun, uh, and I did a few of them. And um and the the maddest thing is in primary school my school didn't even know and we watched them and I was on it and all the right. kids so that was my first sort of not claim to fame but the kids in my class were watching me on telly and it was quite bizarre <laughs> so I was probably only eight or nine and right. and they were like wow yeah. um I did uh then I did a series with Mike Reed uh obviously Mike Reed from EastEnders uh-huh. and he played my dad in a in a show called Noah's Castle for right. Southern Television. Um and I stayed away then. There's some big actors in there as well. Yeah. Um that was like that was like wow in the fact that I was away from my parents. I was probably ten or eleven. Right. And that was quite a big thing. And then I did um a thing called Midsummer Night's Dream with um uh, Phil Redmond uh, Phil Phil Daniels was in it. Uh-huh. Um, Helen Mirren. So I was like, "You are kidding!" I'm <laughs> yeah. People, and then I did a film uh, with Judy Christie uh, a little bit later, and then I did some stuff with Susan Tully before Grand Hill. It was a doctors and nurses thing. So I was busy from from you know from probably the age of seven or eight of of constantly working. Yeah, uh, with some big stars as well at that time. So. For me, it was amazing, but I, you you just take it in your stride when you're that age. Yeah, I mean that that that's quite something. though, considering you were only going to the club as a, you know as a way to sort of help your mental health. That's that's quite you know a, quite a meteoric yes. rise, yes. isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. was a big a big jump. And at the time, obviously, Anna Shares later on was recognised for 
you, people with the, the waiting list just got phenomenal yeah. because people wanted to be on telly. But when I went, it was just a drama club in a church hall, right. uh, and people would 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 come down and stuff. So I wasn't expected to go on and do TV stuff, but it did. It helped me massively as well with with being withdrawn and working with people. So that you know, Mr. Moore, bless him. I, I think he's passed away since then, but I owe everything really to to him from yeah. for introducing me to Anna Scherz. Brilliant. So, so then, how did Grange Hill come about then? Um, Grange Hill. I was first asked to audition for the first year when Stu Pop's year, which right. I'm the same age as Mark Burdis. Oh, Stu right, okay, played. yeah. Um, so I was going for that year, but it coincided of the first year that I went to big school to comprehensive right. school. And my parents said, no, not in a month Sundays uh-huh. are you going to go yes. to comprehensive school <laughs> and have a year out doing Grange Hill. Because they wasn't really fussed if I'd done TV work. So my mum said, look, if you're good, if you're good, golly, bless me. She <laughs> said, if you're doing really well in your first year in, in, in comprehensive school and the auditions come up again, yeah, then we will let you go as long as you keep your schoolwork up. So I missed Mark Burdis's year, uh-huh. um, and then audition for Zamo, and again it started I think at Anna Schur's, Then it got the further you progress, it ended yeah. up going to the BBC, obviously. Um, and I think the only reason I got the part because there was they wanted Jonah and Zamo. Um, one was a good-looking, suave character. <laughs> the other one was uh, just a bother, bother boots and a, oh. and a nut nut, and that oh, was. Which one were you? Uh, yeah, no, I was going to say, I weren't the smoothest one. Uh, so Lee Scott played a good-looking uh, lad, and I was like his sidekick. Um, and I think the only reason I I, I got the part, I'd, I'd come back from um, a boxing do the night right. before, and again, this will probably be mentioned in Granger about something else, and I had a bit of a black eye, I had a skin and I had bother boots, and I just thought, I walked in, I just think that, look, yeah. the part, more than any acting ability. <laughs> that Brilliant. So that was what, well, it was on air in 82. So you would have been yes, filming. Yes. You would have been filming 81. And that's actually the first year group I remember starting from the start. I mean, I was, what, six years old and I was I was watching uh, Grange Hill. And, and, and <laughs> I, like everyone did, I fell in love with Zamo and Jonah. At, at that time, because they were just... Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're relevant to me, yeah. it, the characters yeah. were brilliant. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 my favourite episode is Chesit and Zoo with, with the sea lions and, and the stink bombs with... They're all... They're, they're memories yeah. that I can remember like yesterday. Where they're trying to get Urkin out or Roland out. Yeah. We throw <laughs> stink bombs through the venue. Yeah. It is just brilliant. I mean, so it's obviously... Because you, 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 you'd auditioned before, you were already aware of the programme. And, and were you a fan? Of the program, absolutely, yeah. Because I was, I think, was well, so I was born in '68, and Grange Hill started it in '76, '77. Yeah. So, I, so I, oh, that makes it perfect because I would have been ten then. Yeah. So I would have been just about going into big school. I yeah. remember, I remember it uh, really, really well, and everybody talking about it at uh-huh. school, and people running home to to go to go to watch it, and the first conversation. The next day was all about Grand Jewel. It's yeah. the first time kids had a, a program they could relate to that weren't cartoons or play school. So, yeah, and, and it was really naughty. I mean, I've looked back on some of the episodes now, and and the racism is very near the mark. And uh-huh. and, and one of the ones where they they throw a bench in the swimming pool, <laughs> which you know, wow, that was nineteen seventy eight. How did that happen? Billions, billions, and. Obviously, you know, so you were you you were a fan of the program, and then one of your first scenes, you're in a scene. There's you and Jonah, Griffith, Alan, and Tucker, and you, you must have just like I don't know, thought you were dreaming being in a scene with, with, with them three them three older lads. Like that must have been quite something. It, like it was unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable because um because initially our first episode was Chesit and Zoo, which yeah. is the best episode that I've done. So it wasn't one that we was filming in the school with so i think it was a, a few months later that uh, my yeah. my first scene with uh with george bless him god rest his soul and and todd um uh, tucker was was gripper nicked my mars bar yeah <laughs> todd nicked it back 
and then nicked it off of me. He ate it in front of me. I was like, you, anybody can nick my mask, but it's going to be you. Yeah. I was absolutely in awe. And I, I remember uh, telling people for months, and anyone who will listen, that I've uh, Todd Carty or Todd Tucker's just nicked my Mars bar. So, yeah, I was in awe of him. Brilliant, brilliant. And, like, when we first met Zamo, I, you know, I've, lo- I've looked through some of them episodes in the last couple of weeks, and you don't know how to take him at first. Because he just seems to be like a hard lad, you know, and, and you think at first you think, is he just going to be a bully or is there going to be like, you know, some other side to him? Because he'd said about sort of yeah. where he, he would have clocked Annette on the jaw if she'd have pushed him off the chair like she pushed Jonah off the chair. You know, him, <laughs> him, 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 him and Jonah messing about with the stink bombs and stuff like that. And and, and it's a bit hard to take. But then there's the thing where Roland locks himself in the toilet, as you said earlier on. And it was it was Jonah and Zamo <laughs> that got him out. With Zamo yes. getting Jonah on his shoulders, and and, and I just love I know, that and then they go absolutely yeah. arse over tears. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And and you know, like there's other things with like the cookery lesson that they're doing, where Zamo and Jonah are just throwing the flour and all sorts of dough yeah. at each other, and then Zamo just for no reason turns to <laughs> Roland, like, "What are you staring at?" And you just think, I, "There's no need for that, mate." You know what I mean? So so he. he <laughs> You don't really know how to take him at first, but then it was the athletics trials. Samo was running 1,500 metres. By the way, you did so much running in Grange Hill. I don't know, I don't know if you've ever realised, but it was like every other episode you were running, you were either chasing someone or getting chased. I just thought I'd put that in there. Like, it's, it's no surprise. It's no surprise Samo was doing 1,500 metres. But could you run? Where, like where you like? Uh, obviously with your boxing and stuff, you were obviously quite fit anyway. Yeah, I used to I used to run with that. We would run every Sunday. I hated it. I didn't like it. It was the only uh, exercise with really boxing that I didn't like. But I was uh, I was quite fast and good at it because I had to do it. So yeah, I, I would just yeah. run. I used to run at school uh, in dinner times, run around the playground. Everyone thought I was absolutely mad. But yeah, part of my training, I'd be running all the Brilliant. time. Brilliant. And so, obviously, there was the athletics trials, and Roland had done the shot put, but obviously he wasn't very good at it, and people were laughing at it, and it was Zamo who was like, you know, hold on, leave him alone, you know, don't don't, <laughs> don't be wrong. And you think, all right, so he, he has got quite a nice side to him, like, and there's another bit which I thought, it, it's quite poignant in a way, when Zamo and Jonah were trying to put stickers around the school, they were having a competition with the girls to see who could get stickers around the school in mad places, and they thought that Roland had grassed them up, for putting them somewhere, and Jonah said, "I'm not talking to him anymore." And Zamo says, "You weren't talking to him anyway. Nobody does." And you just think it, that, that's it, it's quite a sad thing, but it's it's also <laughs> quite poignant. Like, and I thought it showed that Zamo was feeling sorry for him and, and did have quite a nice side to him. And and I just want to talk. You've mentioned it a couple of times, but we've got to talk about Chessington because Chessington, as you said, was the best episode you've done. I actually think. It's probably the best single episode of Grange Hill for, from all you know in all the run that I thought you must have had. Yeah, a ball yeah, doing no, that. I, I absolutely agree with you there. Yeah, um, as you said, you know, the first episodes that you filmed, so you didn't really sort of know a lot of the people, and I just think it's, it's a cracking way, I think, to get everyone to know each other anyway. Obviously, you would have done rehearsals and read throughs, but for your first lot of filming. There you go. Let's go loose on a, on a zoo and a theme park and, and 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 see what happens. Yeah, and and if I'm if I'm correct, and 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 I'm sure I am because it was a long time ago when we done studio work, we would have a week uh, a week of half day rehearsals, then a Monday of half day rehearsals, uh-huh. Tuesday off, and then we film Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right. When we turned up for uh, um, location work, there was no rehearsals. Oh, right. So okay. when we turned up for location work on the first, they, somebody had to clarify, clarify this for me, but I'm sure we just turned up, expected to know our lines and do it. Wow. Uh, and one of the one of the scenes, a brilliant scene, which had to be cut from the zoo episode, right. is um, me and Lee Spark are on the top of the bus and we change the bus number. Right. So there's a load of people at a bus stop waiting for the bus they think it is and we've changed it and we go past and everyone is going absolutely Gary at the bus stop and it's a really it's a brilliant scene 
And it's such a shame. And I asked them, I said, the reason they couldn't show it is they were overrunning on the episode. Right, and it's a brilliant scene. Yeah. But the, the whole of that episode, I, I mean, the, the health and safety where Lee Spark goes in with the sea lion, <laughs> there was actually sea yeah. lion in there. He had no one around him. They just saw him stand in the middle by the rock and jump in. Yeah. And nobody there to get him out or anything. Well, everyone was the other side of the gate. So he got in. These sea lions are coming at him. And he, he had to make his own way out. Um, so it was like manic. And then yeah. oh, we was in a ghost train. We get out of a ghost train midway through. What kid would not love to do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, like you say, it's the first time we met. So, But we just all gelled so well, yeah. so quickly. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, Lee Spark, when he was on, said about that. He said, jumping in with the sea lions, and it's like he's not even told, you know. He he, he said he didn't I, he didn't know anything about sea lions. He said, do they eat people? Were they going to try and go for them or what? And there he is jumping in, swimming with them, like. But it it is brilliant that episode, and obviously there's you know getting chased again when the, the lads from the from the posh school yes, parrots yes. And, and sticking a bottle of water down the back of his trousers and and all yeah, that, like yeah. Yeah, brilliant. And then there's the scene in the toilet where. Uh, obviously, the, the, the zookeeper comes in and he knows we're in there, but he looks underneath and then we're sitting above each other. So there's only one set of feet on the floor. Uh, I, I just, it's, yeah. and then and I think Lee, it's that old toilet paper that makes that horrible, like tracing paper. Tracing paper, yeah. And he, and he shakes it up to sound like he's it's, it's, it's in there doing whatever. Um, but yeah, a brilliant episode. Brilliant. Now, the, the other thing in that first series, obviously, Zamo and Jonah always trying to make a bit of money as well, whether it was through betting or whatever. But then the, when Roland got run over, they said they'd make a, they'd do a collection for him. And Zamo's mum could get broken biscuits from from where she worked. Yeah, so they said, they said they said they'd make a collection and get a collection from everyone, and they'd swap a box of the broken ones with a box of the biscuits in the school suck shop, but. <laughs> Zamo's mum nearly lost their job and she took the collection and all that. So in the end, they went to the hospital with a, a half a bottle of orange juice and some and some bananas <laughs> and a lemon that they'd, that they'd nicked from Zamo's kitchen. And I, 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 you know, it, it's it's brilliant. And like like I've said earlier on, that that that, that double that the partnership of, of Zamo and Jonah, it, it, you know, it's obviously one of Grangel's most famous. But yeah, it, just brilliant, just brilliant. Now I have to ask you this question. There's a few mentions in that series about Zamo, and it's the only thing I don't really like about Zamo, about Zamo being a Liverpool supporter. Now, <laughs> whose idea was Motified. that? Motified. Motified. <laughs> um, I was the guy to stand under the clock at, 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 at Highbury when it was. I used to go when Jimmy Wimmer was in goal and uh, Jimmy Young, uh, uh, Willie Young, and stuff. So that was years ago, and then I had to carry a bag saying Liverpool. Can you imagine? <laughs> I, I hated it. Who, who, uh, who's, who's idea it was that? Though? Make sense. Uh, no, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, 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 they just, I did ask. I'm sure I asked, but they were going, "No, you got this." But it just wouldn't make sense for a Cockney kid to be. Well, back in the day, it was either Arsenal or Tottenham. Right? Yeah, uh, that, uh, that's not Liverpool. The only thing like we see, we see is Z- Zamo's bedroom, and there's just Liverpool posters yeah, and scarves yeah, no, everywhere. And yeah. It's the only thing, as an Everton supporter, it's the only thing that I don't like about Samo. <laughs> um, okay, so move, move, we moved on I then. think that's obviously to do with Phil, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Imagine. Yeah, definitely, Phil definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the next year, we move on then. And this story, when I first watched it, didn't make any sense to me. But it does now, and I'll explain why. Is it's when Jonah turns up with the Rodney Bennett badge on, right? At first, it meant he could get into the sweet shop because the sweet shop wouldn't let Green Jill kids in. <laughs> and Zamo was determined to get one, even though Jonah had got it from uh, from Jeremy, his cousin. Zamo was determined to get one, and at lunchtime, Zamo turns it, bumps in to some, a, a lad from Rodney Bennett. Because uh, the lads he said, give me my ball back, and Zamo said, well, I'll give you the ball if if you give me your badge. And then two of his mates turned up, and one of one of his mates is John Drummond, and he played Seva Cleaver later on. One of one yes. of Jeremy's mates was John yes, Drummond. Yes, yes. And then the next scene that we see is Zamo's been obviously beaten up and had his had his uh, his badge robbed. <laughs> and then the next day, though, the next episode, Zamo and John are going to school in the shop and trolley, and then Zamo sees the lads. 
that had beat him up, so Zamo goes for him. But then we find out that it's it's his cousin, and they decide that they're going to they're going to infiltrate Rodney Bennett just to go and just sit in the just sit in school and 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 have a laugh basically. And when they're there, the lads realise that they're from Grange Hill, so they give it shape like a proper Grange Hill chase. <laughs> you were running again through the school, smashing things up and that. And at the time, I remember watching it as a kid thinking, that's stupid. Why would you go to another school just because you didn't like your own? But you know what? When I was in high school, there was a lad who'd done that. There was a lad, genuinely, there was, no a lad, there was a lad who came from another school and came to our school and he he, he got away with it for like mad. got away with it for like three or four days before teachers started questioning. But not no one was saying anything. But yeah, he, he, <laughs> and and <laughs> it, it's like a thing, you know. They say how true to life Grange Hill was, and th- there's a prime example there. You know, you've you've got all your, yeah, your, your yeah, usual yeah. stuff, but that that must have been going on for like for, yeah, yeah, for, for, for them, for them yeah. to have have written it in. But yeah, and and then you got uh, another another school trip to Saint Albans, so you got to yeah, go to Saint yeah, Albans yeah. for a few days, and they they were going, they had to do a project about Saint Al- old Saint Albans, and they had to a- they had to ask people, but obviously Zamo and Jonah, being Zamo and Jonah, couldn't be bothered, <laughs> couldn't be bothered doing that, so they decided to wander around town instead, and they bought a book about old Saint Albans so that they could just make their own project from that <laughs> later on. But then they went to a cafe and Jonah won the jackpot on a fruit machine and they, yes, got, yes, they, yes, they, yes. they got chased by a gang of lads. Yeah, and there's, there's something, yeah, yeah, I remember watching that recently. Something quite significant about that gang of lads within Zamo's story. Do you know what it is? No. So one of the lads is played by Mike Smart who played Howard. There was Doug and Howard, the no, two lads. No. One of them is Mike Smart, yeah, who, uh, who later on was Samo's mate, Howard, yeah. And then if you look no. back at him, if you look back at it, you can just about make out with... with, with oh, I'm going to have a look at that. Yeah. Uh, Howard was in the Persil advert, wasn't he? He was, so he yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the, the grey shirt yeah, and the green shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless yeah. him. He was, yeah. And obviously, you know, we, we said about them buying the book and Mr. Butterworth coming and asking them questions about it. And they started chatting and they started coming up with these, this story about how they'd chatted to this bloke who was who had been in the Boer War. And that's when <laughs> Mr. Butterworth said, well, he must have been some age. And Mr. Butterworth chose them the book and they've got the same book that they'd bought. Like, I, um, <laughs> and, I, and I love that one. Like, And then, of course, there was there was the school open day where, again, Zamo and Jonah were trying to make money on a project of getting people to run around the school. But the most telling thing in that one was during that open day was when Miss Mooney had a chat with Zamo's mum saying that he wasn't always in his classes when he should have been. He was either late <laughs> or somewhere else. And his mum comes in and drags him out the open day. Now, your mum, played by Jenny Twig. She was lovely, lovely. Yeah, that's, I mean, because people always say we've been on here. When when you get an extra family member, it's great because it gives you character like that extra layer on the dimension. Yeah, absolutely. How uh, how did you get on with, with Jenny? Oh, uh, she was really really lovely. We had a really good relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, she was really supportive. Obviously, through the drug storyline, uh, we was working together quite a lot with Melissa. Uh, but she was so lovely. But during Grand Chill, we were still segregated. Not not intentionally, but it just was like that. The kids would stick together and the adults would yeah. stick together. So we didn't have that much. Uh, we didn't, you know, have that many days where we'd be all together. We would we'd be split, we'd be chaperoned, then we'd go on, do our scene and come off. But when I was with her, it was a really lovely relationship. And then there was, of course, the thing with Mr. Knowles, played by Chris Jory. Mr. Knowles, who couldn't control the class until Zamo heard. <laughs> Zamo heard that an inspector was coming to see how he was getting on. It was going to be his last chance. So Zamo and Jonah got the class, told the class, and, and they got them all to behave so that he kept his job. And it was a thank you for supporting the idea of flexi time that Jonah had put to the school council, which just flexi time in a school oh, yeah, just man. seems bizarre anyway. 
there was, <laughs> there was also um, the outward bounds trip on another classic Grange Hill trip as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I capsized in the canoe, yeah, I think, on that trip. That is right. So, did you have to? Did they have to teach you what to do? Not really. Just told me to roll in the boat, <laughs> and then and then. It wasn't a lot. I can't remember there being a lot of training in that. They just said, roll over and then roll back. And I rolled over and realized I couldn't roll back. So it, it was a bit of a worry. To, again, no health and safety at all on that. Uh, but, uh, but again, you, it's just like having fun. A kid wants to capsize in yeah. a boat anyway. Yeah. So an adult telling you to go and do it, it's just like, yeah, great. I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. So, uh, but it, I, I was a, a bit panicky, if I'm honest, I think. But again, yeah, again, just being away as well, you must have had a ball there uh, on that one. It was in Wales, wasn't it? That it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, I'm sure Lee has told you, and he remembered, Lee's been on, some of the stories that went on <laughs> behind the scenes were were unbelievable. <laughs> some I can't even repeat, and I'm sure if Lee's been on, he would he would have told you the ones that we can talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, I, I better be quiet a bit on that. But it was it, it, it behind the scenes or off camera was worse than it was, and probably there more than any time. I don't know why, because our parents weren't there, and um, we just wild. There was uh, there was fights and and yeah. of the night the lights would go off, and it was uh, manic. <laughs> and I think we, we tipped water in some boy's bed to make him think he wet the bed. <laughs> Um, I mean, it was horrendous. It was really bad. Right. Okay. Okay. So moving on then. There was the, also that scene ended, that, that trip ended with everyone dancing to what by Captain Sensible as well. The, one of the first times when we hadn't really had the Grange Hill theme before. And Nadia Chambers said uh, that bit had to be reshot later on that scene because the tape had been damaged or something. So like months after they'd done the, the you'd, you'd have been to Wales, you had to go back and do that end scene somewhere else. That um, is, that, no, I can't. Um, I mean, I've got, um, it goes, but it's really weird because I've got some vivid memories yeah. of, of Grange Hill and, and they're the ones that really stick out in my, in my mind. But that, the Welsh, the Welsh trip, I can remember bits and pieces. <laughs> Uh, but I can't remember that being reshot. If, if Nadia said it was reshot, it was definitely. To be honest, it sounds like you probably tried to blank a lot of that whale sip out, out of your mind. To be honest, from yeah. what, what you've just nearly told me. <laughs> <laughs> and now, at the end of that series, there was the march for Scruffy, and Zamo was on the committee and to save him that the kids had organised, and Jonah wasn't, and there started to be some friction. Between Zamo and Jonah, and not least because he'd ruined the flexi time referendum as well. But it was a little bit telling when when you when you find out what what happened in the next series or what should have happened in the next series. It's quite telling that like that friction between Zamo and Jonah was caused because obviously when the next series started, Jonah wasn't there, and we know that it was supposed to be Lee Spark that was. Jonah's character, Jonah would have drowned in the pool. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. Lee, Lee decided that he that that he didn't want that to happen, so he left there and then. Now, how did you feel when you knew that Lee was leaving? Well, I mean, I was mortified, to be fair, when Lee went, because I didn't see myself as a single character. I right. saw myself as a double. Yeah. Um and I didn't know how I was going to work without Lee because Lee was the was the sort of brains, was the good looks. Um, so if you're a one person and, and you've got the brains and the good looks and then you've just got the brawn, you, you're wondering <laughs> without the good looks and, and the brains where you're going to go from there. So, so yeah, I was um, I was mortified when he went because we we were we were as one. Yeah, and I think we worked really well as one. So. Um, I mean, at that age, you, you you just do it. I suppose you don't think too much about it. But when I knew he wasn't coming into it, I just thought, who am I, you know, who's going to yeah. be my, my playmate and who's going to get up and who am I going to throw stink bombs with? Who are we going to get <laughs> but, I, not, I was mortified there. Yeah, I mean, not only that, you were, you were really tight off screen as well, weren't you? Yes. Of, yes. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, Lee told me about the fact that, you know, you went on holiday and stuff 
together as well. So that must have been really hard. In that oh, way really as well. I spent a lot of lot of time with his parents who were absolutely lovely. And and Lee had this, uh, I mean, I come from a council house in in, in Islington and you go to Lee's house and it had a swimming pool in okay. Romp, Romp, uh, Woodford area, wherever it was. And, yeah. I, and I was like, you are kidding. When I, went <laughs> there, I was like, no way. Um, yes. so, and so we're from worlds apart, but we got on really, really well and did spend a lot of time together uh, off scene, which was which was really lovely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so obviously Jonah had left, but to replacing Jonah, obviously Jeremy was there. Kevin Balan was introduced as a character who was... He was introduced as a character who was already at the school. It wasn't like he was a new one. But the most yes. the most important one for Zamo was Jackie, I think. Jack, Jackie was introduced as a, a pupil from Brookdale. It was a, a modern day Romeo and Juliet. Yes. And, yes. and and weirdly enough, your very first scene with Jackie, she's on a balcony as well. So yes. <laughs> the, the Romeo yes. and Juliet thing there. So many lads in the country must have been jealous of Zamo uh, <laughs> at that time. Oh, they were. And I, um, um, because when, uh, when, uh, Melissa was being auditioned, uh -huh. um, this was at Anna Scherz. Right. And so, uh, production would say to me, you know, have you got any ideas? And at that time, I knew Melissa from Anna Scherz. I fancied the pants off right. her okay. before Grain Chill. I was, smitten with her and um and when they auditioned I, I kept pointing out I mean not whether that had any influence or whatever because <laughs> I'm sure her ability to act at that time for the auditions was amazing but I was like that is the one I want that is the one I love her <laughs> and I used to I used to read my scripts and get butterflies when she was coming in wow. and that went on for a very long time it wasn't even for and I went up um uh, I went up to a to a flat and and she had a she had a sunbed. Well, I hate sunbeds. I hate them. Uh, I can't <laughs> deal with them. And I used to go on her sunbed just to see her. I'd go <laughs> home. I'd have prickly eat for about twenty four hours. It was the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. But I'd go back the next night and say, "Can I have another go on your sunbed <laughs> just to see her?" I went bright red and itchy. I had to have rash cream and everything, but just because I wanted to be uh, yeah. with. Her. Round up. Uh, and my only regret is is not asking her out at any point in Grace Hill. She's already <laughs> told me to, you know, no way. Um, but I wish I had a done yeah. that. As I say, every scene I would read through the script, make sure she's in. And when she's in, I would get in and I'd be nervous. And wow. I, I, I really fancied her. <laughs> oh, young love, eh? And then obviously there was the, the main sort of thing that happened there was what happened with, with Jeremy when Jeremy had, had drowned. And obviously he was in as the replacement for Jonah. And when you look at it, the, the, some of the things that he was doing, like copying Zamo's bus pass and telling Zamo yeah. that he'd seen that yeah. he'd seen Jackie in a car with another lad, it somehow would have made far more sense for Jonah to have been doing those things <laughs> than, than yeah. Jeremy. And it was really hard because it, it was Anthony Mangella, wasn't it, who was the... The script editor at the time, and I believe, yes, yes, I, be I believe, yes. I believe he wrote about this in his autobiography as well. He's written about the fact that it was all ready to go, and then Lee Spark had said, "I'm not doing it," so they had, then had to work around it and and find the way around it. And obviously, you know, when when Jeremy did drown, the way Zamo dealt with it afterwards probably would have been better. It made more sense if it had been Jonah. It would have been, yeah. yeah, it would have made more sense to be. Lee Spark, because we'd had such a bond for such a uh -huh. period of time. And this does happen with teenagers. I mean, boys yeah. and girls, um, where you see their, their friendships, you know, split for whatever reason. And the fact that if he had a girlfriend coming in and he's spending more time with his girlfriend, the, the, the friend gets yeah. really, you know, a bit jealous. So it would have made a lot more sense for for that to be uh, to be Jonah. Um, and it's, he, just, he left far too early. To yeah, be there. definitely. And then obviously it then showed Zamo's struggle afterwards, as, as we've just mentioned there. And he pretended to be sick. He didn't have to go into school. And Kevin went round to see him. But they didn't know what to talk about. And I thought that was really good. I thought the whole thing with that was really good anyway for the kids' yeah. TV programme to show the fact that things like this do happen, but you need to talk to someone. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And there was that awkwardness, wasn't there? That wasn't sure how yeah. to deal with it. 
at that time. Did you get was there much reaction to that scene to, to that story? You know, obviously we know what happened later on, but was there much reaction to that one at all? Yeah, there was. There was quite a bit because you know, I, I think there would have been a hundred times more reaction if it had been Jonah. Yeah, I think it's a shame because I, I think it was a series. Um, people didn't have enough time to get to know and love the character yeah. that, that, that passed. So um, I had a lot of people talk about, oh, golly, you, 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 he died in you. But if it had been Jonah, I think that would have had a much bigger impact than yeah. the fact that the character they wasn't really familiar with. Yeah, and he, he wasn't very likeable, was he, either? So it was a bit... It was, it was no, no that's different. right. Whereas Lee... Yeah. yeah. Whereas Lee the, 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 was really like a early on. If it had changed, it would have just made much more impact. Whereas, yeah, like you say, he's come in, you know, no one wants anyone to die. But um, if they've got a character they love and adore and really like and something happens to them, it's, it's, uh-huh. it's a bit of a blast, you know. It's a yeah. bit of a... Um, and now there was, a, there was another character that Samo had a lot to do with in that series with Gluckso. Gluckso Remington, who, to be honest, looked about 28 <laughs> <laughs> now he obviously he was he was meant to be older than Zamo, but he just looked so much older. Didn't he did, he as well. you're right. yeah. He's he scared the living daylights <laughs> out of me because I think the first scene we did, and I hadn't had time to to meet up with him, and he is like spitting in your face. He's <laughs> really aggressive, and he literally scared the shit out of me um, um, early on. And I. And and you're right, he was with the adults. I think he was about 46. Was right, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 he is, I mean, it, it's one of them characters, it's almost a comical character because of how, you know, the difference in size and all that. Yes. And when you see the fact yes. that Zamo taking his mates around to the school to, to find him and have a go at him and you just... Is that when all the pigeons yeah. fly away, don't they? Yeah, I love that scene. Like Tarantino film. <clears throat> have you ever seen that, that video on... YouTube. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, well, do you know what, right? Someone, so obviously for people that are listening, there's a video on YouTube of, of Zamo and Kevin and all that, but walking around the corner, it's all slowed down and the Reservoir Dogs music is playing yeah. in the yeah. background. But did you know someone has done the Reservoir Dogs beginning where the fellas are walking with the Grange Hill theme? No, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll have to have a look at that. That's yeah. mad. So someone's done that one there, yeah. Now there was another trip. I tell you what, you got it. You got a round and about here sometimes, and yeah, there was a <laughs> there was an orienteering trip that you got to go on over in in Yorkshire, I believe that was with that. But I think sort of the main story was about Roland and Mister Baxter getting lost. Uh, it was in, in, yes, in the woods. yes, yes, it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, you had yeah. your own little storyline there where Zamo and Kevin were determined to beat the girls and be first back. But the girls managed to steer them on a wild goose chase, and, and they didn't. They didn't win it in the end. I forgot all about that. Yeah, and then at the end of that year, there was a school disco, and it was to celebrate the merger um, between the three schools of Rodney Bennett, Grangehill, and uh, Brookdale. And everyone always talks about that disco with um, True and Claire and Stupot getting back together and dancing to True. By yes, Spandau Ballet. Yes, yes, yes. But Zamo and Jackie got back together in that disco as well, because it was always a bit of a roller coaster <laughs> with where they, they were on and they were off. And again, it was at the end credits were done differently, and the credits went round everyone, and it shows yes, them all dancing. Yes, up. Yes. And Zamo and Jackie, the, the producer must have known what they were doing here, because Zamo and Jackie were the first, the first couple that they show in them credits as well. They were a uh, top villain. Uh, it was Lee MacDonald and, and Melissa Wilkes. Yeah, so they, they must have known what they were doing with that one. <laughs> and then the next year was the school major had happened and Gluckso wasn't there. I would have loved to see what Gluckso was getting up to. Yeah. But instead, <laughs> Jackie was now a pupil at Grange Hill, but we had Banksy instead of Gluckso. And there was always a bit of a love triangle. But the first thing I want to talk about there is Mr. Bronson was a new teacher. And when people talk about Grange Hill, they they quite often talk about Mr. Bronson and Aunt Jones and Mr. Bronson and Danny Kendall and the way he picked on them and the way he bullied them. But you were the first in his firing line. Zamo was the first one. And Zamo is actually the first kid that Bronson says, you boy, to. Because that became <laughs> like synonymous with him, didn't yes, it? Um, yes. But he, he had it in for Zamo, didn't he? Right from the start, he Mr. Did. Bronson. He did, yeah, yeah, proper. It must have been the way he looked, I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, Michael Sheard, again, you know, everyone talks about him and everyone just says just what what a great fella he was. And he was scary as well. Yeah. <laughs> if we were if we were if we were naughty, um and and I, I and he knew, I think he knew that we was not scared. He was such a lovely man. I met him obviously when we finished Grand Hill. But uh, again, as we were segregated from kids and adults. Yeah. And I remember us, we were we would mess about on set. We were and they're actors and it's their job and we forgot we didn't realise that, but that's what their living is. That's what yeah. they do. It's their career. It's their, you know, um, and we would mess about, and they they would the teachers would, and especially Mr. Bronson, he would he would tell you offset to yeah. uh, you know get it together yeah. and, um, and and sort yourselves out. And you did listen to him as well, absolutely. Imagine. Yeah, and you know there was that as I said there was that low triangle. It was all a bit on and off with a. Uh, with Jackie and Zamo and the Jackie and Zamo or Jackie and Banksy. Zamo and Banksy were always fighting. And Jackie wanted Zamo to take it to the UB40 concerts, which was like a they were doing a nighttime school trip or something. It was all a bit weird. But Zamo was working in the chippy with Kevin. He had a job in, in the chip shop. Yeah, and yeah. while that was going on, Banksy had asked Zamo to to hold the truce so there was no more fighting. But it was only so he could say to Jackie, we're not fighting anymore. You can come to the concert with me because he's working in, in, in the chippy. <laughs> Zamo packed his job in at the chippy. And as he was walking, he went to find Jackie, but he saw her with Banksy with Banksy's arm round her. A little bit of heartbreak for Zamo there. Poor Zamo. The other thing was the, the West Side Story musical. It was going to be West Side Story, but, yeah. but it was cancelled. So they did like a Brighton Rock thing yeah instead. yeah yeah i was a rocker i think in it. yeah now just before that was meant to happen the sets were ruined and they find out that it was banksy and loop who had wrecked the sets so zamo poured whitewash over <laughs> over <laughs> banksy's head i mean you must have loved having to get him to do that to him to be honest <laughs> yes absolutely because he was i was uh he was my number one enemy at that <laughs> yeah. time uh, anything to do with anyone fancying Jackie, whether it was real <laughs> life or not, I was like, you are, and I'm not having none of it. So him getting her attention was really annoying for me on and off scene. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, you must have gone on really well with, with Tim. Absolutely loved him. Um, and I, I'm in contact with him now, social media and stuff. Yeah. Like, we met up a couple of years ago. He's one of the loveliest guys. He's so yeah. genuinely lovely. Um, yeah, I, I, nothing but praise for the, for the guy. I really, yeah. really love him. Brilliant, brilliant. So obviously you've just mentioned there you played a rocker in the musical and that's a cracking hairstyle that they gave you in, in that <laughs> one. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question. I know what the answer is already. Did you find the dancing and the singing easy? Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. And you'll, you'll, you'll realise that if you're going to talk about the Just Say No record, <laughs> it's a bit you'll understand why I... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I found it really difficult because... Uh, uh, Anna Shows is in the stage school, whereas a lot of them kids uh, on Grand Jewel Lee Spark and all that come from Sylvia Young, which is yeah. predominantly a dance stage school, whereas mine was, uh, no, not at all. No, I've struggled, to be fair. <laughs> okay. All right, so let me move on then. So it's Series 9, 1986, and it's the fifth year, and it's obviously not just your most famous storyline in Grand Jewel, but Grand Jewel's most famous storyline, I would say. And it's the, the just say no and, and Zamo's drug addiction. How did you feel when they said, yeah, this is what's going to happen? Or did they, or did they just give you the script and say, that's what's happening? No, they, uh, Anthony Magella and, and Phil Redman, I think Ron Smedley, I think was the producer then, um, had a chat with my parents and said, look, uh, we want Lee to take this role on to play a drug addict. Are you OK with it? Um, and had a chat with me, but to be honest, heroin, I mean, I, at that time, I was either doing my boxing or I was at Grand Hill, so I wasn't aware of, I mean, even cocaine or drugs like that, I was 15, yeah. I wasn't aware of any, I hadn't heard of it, so heroin, I'd only heard of heroin as in a really nasty drug that only bad people get involved with, um, so I wasn't aware enough of it to think too much about it. I just said, yeah, I'll do it. It's fine. Yeah. My parents said, you're okay with it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, it, it'd be fine. It'll, I'll do it. Cool. And did you have to do much research into it then? We did. We went to rehabilitation centres um, and I was shown some videos of uh, the different stages of 
of people, you know, this is somebody before, this is somebody after, this is somebody during uh, a fix. Um, so, yeah, uh, what was available at that time wasn't, wasn't lots of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I got an idea of it and then just had to put my own take on what I, what I thought what, yeah. at that stage of the, the series or the, or how far I was into the yeah. drug taking what, what and it helps with makeup. I would go in and I'd start early on in the series myself, and as it went on, I'd go in. I'd have my hair greased down. I'd yeah. have my bags done. I'd, I'd look darker. I'd have spots and pimples. And when that makeup was being done, sometimes it'd take an hour or, or two hours to be done. During that time, it's really weird. You sit and get into character, watching that character materialize in front of you. Yeah. Um, so that helped quite a bit. Right, brilliant. Okay, and again, it's it's one of those things that Grange Hill did really, really well. I thought because it's just sort of like little throwaway things at the beginning where you hear Zamo asking Kevin, "Could he borrow money?" and Kev just says, yes. "You still, you still yes. owe me, you still owe me from the other day." And that was like a throwaway thing. You don't, you don't yeah. think anything of yeah. it. Nobody had a clue early no. on, to be fair. And then it was the moustache weighing competition that they did where Zamo cheated and, and wait, worked out what it was and couldn't believe he got it wrong and it, obviously Mr Kennedy was saying why did he need what did he need that money so badly yeah. for yeah. and he and he was spending less time with Jackie with Jackie he'd sold the mopeds that he had stuff. and I didn't yeah. I vividly remember at the time because there wasn't like spoilers or anything went out any time and, and my mum said to me there's something not right with Zamo and I, I vividly remember mad, my, my mum saying to me, there's something not right here. And, you know, he was lying to Jackie about what he was doing with his money. And and, and it was so different than the yeah. character of previous series yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He was re becoming really withdrawn. And then, you know, there was the thing where Doug went to his house and they smashed up. He, he took the decanter. Yes, that's, and so many people remember that scene with the, 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 the canter lid. Um, yeah. And her records, he took her records as well. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, that scene I remember so 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 well. Can um, I ask though, was that was that filmed in a in a studio? Because I know Phil Redmond had a he had a thing for going to actual places, didn't need to film. So was the was the flat scene? I, you I'm know guessing... what? I I've got a feeling it was filmed in a flat, but right. I think it would have been a studio. I I, I generally can't remember. I would say a studio, and I, I can't remember, but I just remember the the scene and doing yeah. that. Um, and I've watched it again and again that scene, and it and it's really sad, you know, yeah. what happens to Zamo because he doesn't really want to do it. No, he's sort of forced into it, and he's like his mum's right. He goes, no, 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 but you know, he's he's too past gone with the drug. Uh, drug. Yeah, and then obviously, like there's, there's there's the famous bit then in the arcade where Roland is working there and. He went in and uh, Zamo and his mates went and asked if they could go in the back so that uh, yes, Yasmin yeah, could, could, yeah. Could, could cut their hair and come out looking exactly the same. Just obviously their faces were obviously different. He was a bit more, you know, he was he was yes, out of it, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he went back. He borrowed money off Roland from the machines and took. Yeah, he made him the get back. the machine yeah. when the boss had gone out. He's going, you won't, you won't miss yeah. it. Yeah, and then and then there's that famous reveal then, that famous yeah, scene yeah. where. It, it zooms in, like it, it jumps in to zooming in on. I think on... that's the first episode they ever done that. There was no music no. initially, and it just zoomed in, and went closer and closer yeah. to, uh, and to the face. It's it's one of those things there where people, it's like a Mandela effect thing where people actually think that Zamo died. Yes, um, and, and I still get people say yeah. that now. Um, you died in it, and I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I went on for a couple more series. Yeah, um, and then. It, it, it's one of those things, I think, because you see that picture and you just assume that, yes, that, yes. He, that he did. And, you know, like Roland was trying to talk to him about it and he was in massive denial, Zamo, about it. But then there's that there's that scene in the school, in the locker room with Kevin oh, and, yes, and, yes. And, and, and Jackie. And that, I, I'm saying it again, for a kids' TV programme, that, that, that scene is brilliant. I think for any TV programme, that whole scene, the three of you in that scene, it's brilliant as well. Did you have to do much choreography for that? We did. We walked. We walked through it. Mainly the hit with uh, the the Jackie bit was we walked through that quite a few times to make sure it it looked 
obviously because yeah. I hit Kevin. We, yeah. uh, you know, so we had to do that. The pushing the Jackie that was done quite a bit with the calculator, and then the drugs being thrown onto the floor. Then me dabbing them on the floor. So we did walk through that quite a few times. Yeah. Um, and I've watched it again and again, and I and I I can't fault that scene. I I just think it is an amazing. Yeah. And like you say, that scene for for eleven year olds to fifteen year olds to watch is um you know it, yeah. Quite frightening, really. It was, it was, Is it true that then? Can I ask that you wouldn't let your kids watch that? Is that right? Yes, yeah. Recently, my I've got a stepdaughter who's fifteen, and my son's fifteen. We had all the DVDs given to us um, years ago. They've been sitting in 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 the attic, and um, they were probably nine or ten. And Katie said, "Can I watch some of your grandchildren?" I said, "Yeah, no worries." So they started watching. And they watched all the series yeah. up until the drug storyline. I think they would have been 10 then, so they wasn't going in big school. And I stopped them there watching it. They've right. never watched it. And I right. don't think we stopped watching it. I just thought I'd, it's a bit near the mark. I just uh-huh. think I don't want them to know about how, which is so yeah. bizarre because back in 86 when it was on, the audience was from four, you know, four or yeah. five. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was. I would have been 10 when that was on, yeah. Yeah. I would have been 10 myself when that was on, yeah. Okay. So then, obviously, that then led to Grey Jill going just fucking bananas, wasn't it? It was like, you know, the the single. Yeah. And obviously, the the, the trip to the White House. Look, I don't want to embarrass you about the single. And I know you were asked to sing on on, on just say no, like... But yeah, you, you you ended up in the chorus, didn't you, or, or, or someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like, the story is, the woman took me up to the room from the BBC because they said, "Well, you're going to have to front it because of who you are." Yeah. And um, yeah. and she said, "You do our pedio," and I genuinely still think it's a Greek island. I haven't got a clue what she's <laughs> talking about. And I I sung one note. I promise you, I went ah, yeah. and she slammed the piano down, and wow. they walked out. <laughs> this is gospel. She went, "No, nope, you'll have to mind." Um, and so I think Roland sings my bits on the right, and even the dancing. I, you might, I, if you look at the video, I'm weightlifting in the video, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and that goes back to the the, the discos and the other stuff in Grand <laughs> I can't sing or dance, so um, but it was amazing to do, yeah, because obviously that led then going to America, the White House, and, and meeting Nancy Reagan, and that must have just been incredible because you couldn't have been expecting. Or that to happen when you when they said this is what's going to happen with this storyline. No, because because when we done the single, we was told it was going to earn a bit of money for rehabilitation centres for charity to yeah. you know towards what put in to give us the storyline. And then uh, years ago, for people who don't know, the charts used to be on a Sunday night. You used to have your yeah. record button on your tape recorder and press it. To get yeah. Them voices out of the, and every week we would come back and go, do you know what? We're number 86 in the charts. Come back in the next Sunday. We're number 40. And every week we would come down. All of a sudden we all come and go, you know what? We're number five in yeah. the <laughs> charts. And we're singing on top of the pops. Um, and I think then we got asked because of the uh, Nancy Reagan. And I, I love this because I, I watch a lot of narco stuff. And um, all the Just Say No videos are part of the video. We're not in them, but it's all the same time we was doing Just Say right. No. And then we got a call to say, do we want to go to... And at the time, I didn't realise what they just saying. No, I just thought it was kids setting drugs. I didn't realise it was doing all the drugs being imported. But mm-hmm. um, they said, do you want to go to do a tour? So we sang in Yankee Stadium in front of about 80,000 people. I don't think it was full. Um, Irkin's the best one for this. So we went to Boston. We went to Central Park. Uh, we went everywhere with that. And yeah. then finally meeting Nancy Reagan yeah. in the White House. Yeah, to give her a record. Um, and now I I am more impressed with that now than I was then. Right. Then I'm like, you know, I'm going to see the first lady. I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'm on a Virgin flight. I'm a straight out. Yeah. We have <laughs> conferences. And then now I look back and think, imagine my son doing that now, going out to America in the White House and seeing the first. I would yeah. just be in awe of it. So I didn't think. I didn't realise how big it was until afterwards, but I look back now and just go, that is amazing. Yeah, brilliant. Now, whenever I'm putting an episode of the podcast out, I always do a thing on social media. We have a guest the guest competition and I put picture clues up for people to to guess who it's going to be. And the person, that get, person that's first to guess it gets to ask a question. 
And this question is from someone on Twitter called Clive1970. And his question is, years later, Erkin came up with that story that they'd been smoking a spliff in the White House, which he, he's now said wasn't true. Well, how did you feel when you first heard that story? I've spoken to Erkin about this. <laughs> I was mortified, to be fair. Yeah. And at the time, I was 16. I was boxing. I was anti-drugs. I was, yeah. I was yeah. not aware of anything. And, and my mum was a chaperone at the time. So my mum was a bit, you know, a bit like, well, I was there with the kids. They weren't. And if you ever, and I've spoke to Erkin since about this, you couldn't go to for a wee in the <laughs> White House without being followed by a yeah. doorman. You were literally handcuffed wherever you went. They were, there was somebody with you the whole time. So yeah. can you imagine even thinking about it? <laughs> yeah. up in the White House? It just wouldn't work. I think it was a... A throwaway comment, uh, I think it uh, uh, can or uh, whoever said it, and and it's a shame for me. It just put a bit of a yeah uh, singe on on what was such a good campaign because then it left the door open for people to take the piss out of it. Yeah, um, but I can I can categorically say uh, genuinely, and I will front anyone that there is in the White House you cannot smoke. Yeah, split. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, oh, fair enough. Okay, so we move on then. And you were in the uh, sixth form in Series 10. And um, uh, obviously, we sit in all levels, which you got six passes. By the way, Zamo got a pass six all levels there. <laughs> and it was quite good at this one because it was obviously... Grangeville didn't always sort of refer back to past storylines. No. Um, but, but they had to with Zamo. Um, yes. Um, yes, yes, and, yes. And, and show the aftermath of him dealing yes, with yes. it and the fact that there was still these people in his life who he'd been involved with in, in the past. And and I just thought that that was quite good. And obviously the <laughs> the Zamo and Jackie roller coaster was up and down again. <laughs> but Jackie went to a Narcotics Anonymous weekend with Zamo. Now we didn't see that, but we did see the barge trip that everyone else went on. Yes. Um, yeah, which yeah. is which are two brilliant episodes. Was there any other reason for you not to go on that? Or was it just because the storyline said just because the storyline said right. i think because there was so much upbeat going on on that um on that trip yeah they it would have been difficult to they would have had to film separate scenes of zamo being you know trying to get on the mend and stuff like that so yeah. i don't think there was time for it um and again i think what you're you're absolutely right what you said be, about the recovery because Initially, the reason they chose Zamo rather than Griffith to do the drug storyline was to show that a, a good character can get involved with heroin. Heroin. Yeah. So you know that's why everyone was so gobsmacked. If it had been Griffith, they'd gone, "Oh yeah, well he's you know we knew yeah. it was coming." Um, but with Zamo, it was like more of a shock. And I think that's why they was trying to show you in the sixth form him sort of getting back to some sort of of normality. But the sixth form for me was a bit of a an anti-climax yeah. after a massive drug, big drug storyline yeah. to then just sort of phase in and phase out. But yeah. they had to do that to, you know, people wanted to know he was on the men. But it, it was a bit of a, yeah, I would have wish I would have been rather been on the boat having fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And then, of course, Zamo and Jackie got engaged. Now, as a kid, I was watching that. I would have been, what, 11, 12. I, I just didn't think anything of it. I thought... Because you were older than me. And I'm yes, just thinking, that's yes. what happens when you get older. You get engaged. But when you think about it now, I think, Christ, yeah. you're in you're, six you're right. I haven't really <laughs> thought about it until you just said that. Because my, my stepdaughter's uh, 15. And we were probably not a year older. And I'm mortified <laughs> if she's got a boyfriend or, or mentions a boyfriend. So if she says she's getting married, I'm on <laughs> So, yeah, you're right. It's the first time I've ever worked out that age relationship to it but yeah i yeah. would not be happy so it was a big a big thing to that. Um, that it now. is when, when you look at it yeah it is yeah. It, you know, it was a big thing and they wouldn't tell their parents at first and then they were zamo seemed quite embarrassed about it and then in the end when they talked about it they decided that they weren't going to get married they were going to stay yes. you know yes. boyfriend girlfriend and then that party ended with a conga out of grange hill <laughs> and then that was the last we saw of Zamo in Grange Hill. Yes, yes. How did you feel about having to leave? Absolutely mortified, but you are... It's like when you leave school, you know yeah. it's coming. Yeah. Um, and I think 
you don't know if you're in the sixth form until the end of year five, and right. then they tell you the storyline. So you're hoping that you're in year six, and yeah. then it's a real relief because I remember thinking, "Wow, well, I'm in year six, so that's yeah. another year I've got." Um, but it's not like being in EastEnders where they you go in in the October and they say, "Right, you're being written out in January." Yeah. We knew it was coming, but devastating. I was absolutely devastated. I remember when I first left, I I, I was boxing trainer. I wanted to be a boxer, and I, I left to do that. But I remember leaving them gates then. It's like leaving school. I was mortified that I'm yeah. never going to be coming back. It was it was heartbreaking. It had been part of my life since yeah. I was 11. But you did present. You presented the behind the scenes program, didn't you? You got you yes. got you got to do that. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, yeah, yeah, I did. I was really pleased to do that. And I watched that recently actually. Yeah. Um yes, yeah, so that was that was really, really lovely to come now, back and do that. Something else I wanted to talk to you about. This might have been on when you might have been doing this alongside Grange Hill. It's a film for the Youth Hostel Association called Enter yes, the Adventure. And do you know what? It's not on YouTube anymore, that that film. And and I love it because it's just it we just it's a proper it just reminds me of half term. Are holidays. you talking about Enter the Adventure? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, Enter the Adventure. It was on YouTube for ages, but I, I mean, I can't find it. But there is, there's the single that Mark Birdus sang on that, A New World. That's the one he sang. Yeah, um, yeah, that's so, it. And we're in there playing. I think I'm yeah. playing the drums, aren't I? <laughs> but you're playing the drums, but using a wooden spoon and like not even a drumstick. It's like a beat for another musical instrument. But you got to go horse riding in that one. Didn't you? Yes. As well. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, that I, I, bad, oh, that's sorry. quite ahead of his time. That yeah. pressing enter on the key and then entering <laughs> into the computer and that. But yeah, um, I'd, I, I, I'd, I'd done a bit of horse riding a little bit, so I wasn't that scared. But uh, that was so, so much fun doing that yeah. end of the adventure. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, and you've also you've mentioned the boxing, and there's a video of you on on YouTube fighting Kevin Hodkinson, who I believe. Yeah. Paul Hodkinson's brother. Yes, is that right? Yes, yeah, oh, yes. oh, obviously, oh, oh, I was well known up here, like Paul Hodkinson. And, and and you beat the lad on that one, don't you? And it's, you know what, what I like about that, Lee, is when, when, when you read some of the comments, the people who are like boxing fanatics comment so much on, on how good of a boxer you were on that. Can you tell us then why you, why, why you didn't carry on with the boxing, please? I was... Uh... I was still boxing when I left Grange Hill and I was still boxing up until I was 21. Right. And then um, I was with my dad and we were talking about signing contracts to turn pro in the October. Not necessarily that I would have done brilliant, right. but I was offered money to put bums on seats because uh -huh. I could sell tickets. Yeah. Um, and it's something I wanted to have a go at. And I won the junior ABAs, the NABCs, the schools. Uh, as, a, as a kid, I won all the championships as I could. So, I thought that's the next stage really to do that. And then uh, me and my dad went to see and was going to sign up in October. And I think it was the June of round about when I was 21. I had a really bad car accident. Two guys were being chased by police in a Peugeot. They hit the van I was in. Nice. Um, they Subsequently, they both died. But I went 47 feet through the air <sighs> and smashed my head against the wall um, and was literally uh, out the completely out of it for I stitches in my head. I think it was wow. uh, loads of stitches in my head and, and I couldn't it took me two years. I had to have therapy and stuff. I couldn't right. work out change from a garage. I remember about a year later going to a garage and I, I started crying because I couldn't work out. So it really disrupted everything. And obviously because of that I couldn't box anymore. Uh -huh. um, and then I was just heartbroken because that was I didn't want to act. I weren't that fussed about acting. Yeah. It was the boxing that I wanted to do, and then that was taken away, and then so that 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 sort of put an end to that, really. Blimey, yeah. So was that why you went back to the acting for a bit then? Yeah, I did. I was uh, my dad. I was working for a friend of my dad who had locksmiths, and I did a bit of. Um, uh, I did the bill. I think I, I did. I did quite a bit of work, but not enough That's, consistency yeah. to be in it full time, unless it was going to be an EastEnders. Like, because I went. I, I, my only regret is I always wanted to be in EastEnders, and my regret was, we, I think they started in '84, we left in '85, '86, something yeah, around yeah, that yeah. time. It'd been going about two years, and Judy Crancy was the casting director, and and I knew I was going to go in there and say, just brazen. I was 16, 17, 
just go, Julie, look, I've finished brain jewel. I'm ready to come in here now because I think <laughs> she was there, there was a couple of people. I was just thought, oh, it's a natural progression. Yeah. And I remember walking out and for some reason I, I got sidetracked. I never did it. And then my biggest regret in my whole my life is not going in that office. She would have said no, but for the fact I didn't ask her, it's it was yeah. a massive regret. But, until yeah, yeah, you did get to go on <laughs> it, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> Terry the bus driver. Yes, that's to go back. Like, so can I just ask then? You, you just mentioned you were in the bill, and in one episode of the bill, you were married to Jackie, right? Yeah, obviously, obviously it wasn't yes. Jackie, right? But you were was that, right. Was that a coincidence, or was that them saying we're getting you two in? I've got a feeling that was because all the casting people knew who we were. Right. Um, I, I can't remember the casting on that, but I think that was cast deliberately, right. if I'm honest. I, I, I genuinely think they knew it who must we were. Been, must have been, must have been. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. must have yeah. been. Yeah, okay. You've appeared on quite a lot of stuff, either as yourself or as Zamo. When celebrity programmes were first taken off, you were on one on Channel 5. And oh, it was Cirque the Celebrity. Oh, that was Sky One. <laughs> the Sky, was it? Yeah. Um, and now, do you know what? In the trailers for that, right, this is how sad I am. They picked, they were like giving teasers as to who it was going yes. to be. And yes. they mentioned yes. this 80s Grain Jill start. And this was what, like 20 years ago when I thought, I'm watching that. Don't care who it is, I'm going to find. And, and I couldn't believe it when it was you. I mean, that must have been a bizarre thing to be doing. That was. That was that was amazing. That paid for my wedding. I got a call saying, "Would I would I like to do Cirque Celebrity?" And this is back into I've got a, I've got a picture up there with me in my <laughs> costume, and that's how it was 2006. And my agent said to me, "I said, well, I'm not sure." She said, "It's thirty thousand pounds." Wow. I was like, "What?" She said, "If you get kicked out the first round, it's thirty grand." <laughs> so I got married in Vegas on the back of that. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> so that was that was my, uh, my 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 wedding money. But I I did it, and it was the hardest thing I ever done. They would yeah. get you in the circus at six in the morning. Right. We would work out for three hours or four hours before the crew come in, and they the circus people would make sure we had. Uh, Blister, and this is no kidding, blisters, really bad blisters. And they would make you wee on a um, bandage and yeah. put it on the back. And I thought they were taking the piss, but they, <laughs> they did. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but the most exciting thing I've ever done. Yeah. I loved every minute of it. Brilliant, brilliant. I just, because I remember that, because like, obviously, you hadn't really been, we hadn't seen Lee McDonald no. or Zamo for a while, like, and, and yeah, to yeah. Be on that. really out of the blue. And you know, like I say, it was one of those sorts of first big celebrity it was. TV programs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and that's it must must just been brilliant to be on it. And on that on that vein, there was a thing a few years back on social media where you were saying about you wanted to be in the jungle on I'm a celebrity. W- would you do it if if you were offered? Like, I um yeah, I don't know why they don't come and ask me. <laughs> to be fair, um. And, and 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 it's silly. It's like uh, when I did the uh, uh, the the circus show. Uh, you do think you're going to go from one to the other. Yeah. So I come out there thinking, right, okay, I'm going to get a phone call for uh, for you know for Jungle. Uh, Twenty four years later, I'm still waiting <laughs> for that phone call. Um, but I I think uh, now I would have to question it only because I'm a lot older and I hate right, to okay. get out of bed now and and things are a bit more difficult. But uh, probably five or six years ago, yeah. I would jump at it without a shadow of a doubt, but I'm not sure if my body is up to it <laughs> as it was. Brilliant, brilliant. My favourite ever appearance that you've been on since Grange Hill was when you were on Nevermind the Buzzcocks in the in the mystery guest, the identity parade. Because they, I they, remember that. They had to work out who Lee MacDonald was. They had to work out who Zamo was. And it's brilliant when you watch it because Mark Lamar, just says, well, that's ammo because you don't look any different. You didn't. But Nicholas Pars, Nicholas Parsons wouldn't have it, would he? He wouldn't have it that you <laughs> that you played Zamo. <laughs> and it's so funny when you watch it because he he just says Mark Lamar says right the way through the round. Yeah, it's, it's Lee McDonald's Lee McDonald's Zamo. 
Number two is Zamo. It's it, he played Zamo, and it's just, and it's just mate. One literally. Oh, you're so it. right. I've watched that again and again, and it's so funny. <laughs> well, hello, Lee. Thanks for not <laughs> <for> <laughs> <laughs> Is it because they're saying you know um, who 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 played who's Lee McDonald who played Zamo? Is it number one Grange Hill? Is it number two Zamo? Because he's just telling them straight away, and I and I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, as you were saying there about you, you know, you've been on so many things as yourself. And Zama, when Erkin was on, he said he believes that he should take ownership for his character and for his time on Grange Hill. And you seem to have, have done that as well. You seem to have that, that belief. Yeah. As well. uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I didn't realize that I'm 55 and I didn't realize it would still have such a massive impact on. Uh-huh. I don't think we do growing up that, and I don't think there's kids' programs now will have the same impact because you've got streaming channels. Yeah. At, at that time, there's only BBC One, BBC Two, uh, ITV. Um, but as I've got older, and and people, you know, have got such fond mom- memories of of Grain Hill, I just love it, and I and I want to, you know, I want to reminisce with them people, and yeah. I want. Um, so yeah, it's something that I'm I'm really proud of. Um, so yeah, it, brilliant. It, and you must, you must get recognised all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean I'll get recognised. We'll go. It's probably the age group gets older and older, uh, and as you get on, you realise I realise that, and I realise how old I'm getting because uh, one of Katie's friends come in and she said something about um uh how old are you or something she went she's 15 so she's so age that i did grain chill yeah and she went oh yeah my granddad's only 53 <laughs> i'm two years old than her granddad and she's 15 i'm like yeah i'm now old uh but yeah we, I, I probably get recognized quite a lot um of people my age and i get people if i'm not out filming or doing it and i'm back in my shop i'll get people come in and call me zam even though they've known me for 10 <laughs> 15 years they will call me Zam, not as a piss take, but they go, oh, Zam, can you come sort yeah. this out? They, they, I'm probably 50% of people since I've had my shop in Wallington call me Zam rather than Lee. <laughs> right. And I don't, I don't mind. I've got no problem with it. We've mentioned the fact that you have had the locksmith. How, how did that come about? When I was, when I was, when I'd had the car accident and mm-hmm. I couldn't box anymore, my dad was a locksmith, worked for a company called Aldridge in London. And he knew Eddie Aldridge and he said, look, my son's in a bit a bit of limbo, not sure what he wants to do. Can he come and work for you? So he said, yeah, Lee. He said, like, he can come in and have time off to do TV stuff and, and, and stuff like that. And then I did a, 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 a series or a, a mini film by, uh, I think it's Robert, the part, Linda's uh, partner at the time, called Respect with Nick Berry. All right, yeah. Um, and... And I thought it was, I played a boxer in it. It was a really, it was an ITV uh, TV film. And and I thought, this is it. This is going to be my comeback into uh-huh. TV. But again, like it done really well and then nothing. Um, so I was working at the locksmith and I went to the British Museum and a guy said, they're selling a locksmith in Wellington. Do you want to buy it? I was like, no intention of buying it. And a couple of people said to me, Lee, why don't you buy it? And then you can get back into doing what you want. You can have a business. So I bought it back in 2000. And and to be fair, I'm I'm still here now. Probably yeah. the last, because um, I've got a couple of people work for me. And in 2000, and probably 15, Cherry Parker, an agent, well, I spoke to and she said, Lee, I can get you some stuff. And she got me EastEnders. <laughs> so, you know, having the shop and, and stuff like that was lovely. And then to do EastEnders was the biggest thing for me ever because it was a dream come true. Yeah. And I, thought, I don't know, I, I want to act and do stuff. But if I don't do anything else, Grain Jewel and I want to do EastEnders. I'm done. That's my ticked, my, yeah. um, you know, my bucket list ticked. I, I'm done. And um, she's been really good. And on the back of that, we, we, we're still doing bits and pieces. I'm reading for a couple of independent films. I've yes. just done a thing for Channel 5. Again, talking about Grain Jew, I'm doing a thing for the BBC coming up. Um, so it's, it's lots of bits all over the shop. So probably now I'm, I'm in a really nice position to have yeah. the business fall back on, but go off and do other stuff. Yeah. So uh, fingers crossed, I want to you know be doing more stuff over the next Brilliant. couple of years. Brilliant, can't wait. Are you still in touch with any of the cast? 
Now then. Uh, I speak to Roland. Roland, <laughs> I speak to Erkin all the time. He's probably the closest uh, person. And bless him. I'm murdered for calling people. I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, all of yeah. my friends will say this and they go, yeah, so I'll call you tomorrow and I don't because I've got two kids running the business. You know, it, it's just difficult. I'm not making excuses. It's difficult. <laughs> um, but Erkin rings me religiously for, for every fortnight and he'll ring me up and he goes, as the wife, as the kids. Yeah. It's so lovely. It really is lovely. And I should ring him more. I do ring back a couple of times. But, yeah, we sit and chat for a little bit. I speak to other people, but only other Grangeville people, only through Facebook right. yeah. messages. Yeah. Uh, Melissa Wilkes, we occasionally speak to because I think her son is boxing. Oh, nice. Was, uh, my, bless my dad. He was cool. at my dad's boxing club. So we have little chats now and again, but um, not as much as I would like. On, on on the boxing, a nice little link there with Grange Hill was you did Celebrity Scissor Hands, didn't you, with Chris Perry Metcalf? Yes! And he, he, yes! He, was, he was boxing for a while, wasn't he? He was on the undercard for Tony Bellew, I believe. So, yeah, so he, he that nice little link there, like, because he, the, he was the new Tucker, Chris. He was yes, uh, to, yes. Tucker, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, okay, well, Lee, we are sort of coming towards the end of the interview. I've You're got fine. the same, the same f- questions I always ask people at the end of, of the interview. Now, recently in the news, there's been talk of a Grange Hill movie in the pipeline. What do you think of the idea of a Grange Hill movie? I mean, I would love to, I would love to do a Grange Hill film. And I think if it's, you know, there's so much they could do. So I've got a 14 year old uh, boy and a stepdaughter who's, uh, fifth or both 15 and they're going for exactly the same not necessarily them but their peers and that of bullying of all of the same aspects uh-huh. that, that we went through but in a completely different their yeah. bullying is all on social media uh it's all on the phone snapchat and stuff like that yeah. so it's 24 7 when we had bullying we'd have a little fight leave school it's forgotten about till we go back in theirs is non-stop yeah. and you've got uh things like tiktok with suicide things for kids to um do suicide encourage them there's so many scary things out there knife crime i think grange or or they could do it now it wouldn't be us as older i wouldn't have thought i think it would work as showing how kids have to deal with yeah growing up in that you know now at this age we live in because i would i say i would much prefer my kids to live be brought back up when i was in the uh 70s and 80s i just think they were brilliant times but every older generation say yeah. the same about <laughs> yeah. their generation don't they yeah uh, def- yeah i definitely. think a film would work and and i uh, given the chance to be a granddad in it or a dad i would uh jump out well it. see normally i ask people if you were asked would we see a return of of zamo but i'm gonna ask are you are you kidding i'm <laughs> gonna ask you have you been asked to be in it um, I have not been asked. <laughs> no, to, okay. I would, I would jump in it. I'm aware that Phil uh, Redman has been speaking of it, you know, right. and it has gone quiet. Um, yeah. and I've been in contact with Phil well, initially, um, uh, in the early stages, uh-huh. but I've not heard anything recently. But Phil knows that I would do it. Brilliant. If there was a part there, I've, I've told him enough times, um, and I'm sure he's got the message. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if it did go ahead, I would, I would, I would love to be involved. Okay, so when you were a kid, you loved watching Grange Hill. So other than Zamo Maguire, who is your favourite character on Grange Hill? But I've only got one, and that was Tucker. Tucker right. to me is Grange Hill. If yeah. you think of um, Grange Hill, just think of Tucker. Uh, he was my. Uh, it was my everything. I just, I adored him. He's my idol. I loved him. Uh, he would be the, the character for me. I didn't really watch it when I left, but if I, um, in my, it would be Roland for me in my, my era. Yeah. Um, and if I was to go for another one, I would say Ziggy and, or John Alford and, uh, uh, and George. Yeah. Ziggy and Robbie. Uh, they were the mischievous ones. Yeah. In that. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, if you couldn't have played Zamo, which, which other character would you have liked to have played then? That's a giveaway, isn't it? <laughs> if I couldn't have played Zamo, I would have played uh, I would have played Todd, but I'd have been an uglier version of Todd. <laughs> Tom's quite smart. I got this thing about being ugly, and I least part was that they're just fobbing me off all the time, aren't they? <laughs> 
uh, as a sidekick. But yeah, it would be if I wasn't me, it would be it would definitely be uh, Tucker. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, now you you've talked about this quite a little bit already, but the final question, Lee. Why do you think then there is still such affection for Grange Hill? I think the affection for Grange Hill will last forever because uh, people have a thing about children's programs. It takes them back to an era yeah. that they, 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 they can remember so well. I mean, uh, when I was growing up and all through growing up, there'll be a group of you have a couple of beers and you will always go back to children's programs. You'll always talk about children's programs. Yeah. And I think that era of of kids' programmes, the main one you would talk about is Grange Hill. And because a lot of people could relate to it, because yeah. there was a bully in, in, in your normal school, there was in Grange Hill, there was a fug, there was in Grange Hill, was in your normal school. So everyone could pick a character. Um, and, and everyone I speak to, my age, you can remember it, has got the fondest memories of it. And I think it's just because you remember them times so much growing up and it relates to you. Everyone remembers their school days. And at the same time, they were in parallel watching Grain Chill. So yeah. the two together just work. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming on. You you know that I've been trying to get you on here for ages. Um, yeah, and I'm so sorry, <laughs> honestly. I've not been putting it up. It's just getting a, a time where I can sit. So, so uh, to get you on has been brilliant. And to get you on for the 50th episode. Yeah, Erkan rang me recently and said, Lee, Lee um, and I said, I, I really want to do it. It's just having an hour and a half where I can yeah. sit down with no kids and yeah. Uh, uh, whatever so I'm really pleased it's been brilliant listening speaking to you and, and you giving us your experiences and your take on things as well so thank you so much for coming on it, no it, thank you I just hope brilliant. it was what you expect. I really oh, don't know I'm really not you know from it what, yeah. what you were expecting brilliant oh definitely definitely so once again Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone that listens, by the way. I know this is the 50th episode. In the first episode, Ricky Simmons said he hoped it was going to run and run. And I had, I massively had my doubts over whether it would. So to get to 50, I'm absolutely made up that, that, that we've got there. There's still loads more to come. Don't think this is the final one by any stretch at all. But yeah, Lee, thanks again. And to anyone that's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.